You've been given the exciting responsibility of administering your team's Notion workspace. If that's the case, welcome! This video will prep you on the features available only to admins. From deciding how your teammates, as well as people external to your team, interact with your workspace, to allowing third-party integrations. Note that this content is catered to teams with enterprise plans. If that's not your case, but you're considering upgrading your workspace to enterprise, you might also enjoy this sneak peek. Here's a workspace which boasts a top-level page for each team, where you can store team-specific information like guidelines, OKRs, or onboarding docs. We call these pages top-level or workspace-level pages, but you can think of them as wikis for specific teams. This homepage is the central place for company-wide information such as the team directory or employee benefits. You could also create a database to be shared with the entire team, such as this meeting notes database or this tasks database. In each case, the database is the go-to place for any meeting notes or tasks across the entire company allowing for transparency and consistency across departments. For clarity purposes, we recommend you keep a small number of pages, around 10 to 15, in the sidebar. As an admin, you can even prevent non-admins from editing the sidebar. We'll show you how to do this in a bit. To change anything about your workspace, you'll need to access its main menu by clicking on the Settings and Members button at the top left of the sidebar. This window will open up, featuring the Members section. There are several ways users can interact with a Notion workspace. Commonly, most people in your organization will be workspace members. This means that they will be able to view, create, and edit pages in Notion. When you create a workspace while on the team or enterprise plan, you are automatically assigned the role of workspace admin. Admins can add people to the workspace, as well as change anyone's access level at any time here and even remove someone from the workspace. Here, you can see the list of all members, as well as admins, of your workspace. Each is featured with their name, email, and access level. For privacy reasons, we decided to hide family names and emails in this video. To find someone fast, look their name or email up in the search bar. They will automatically show up with their corresponding info. If you'd like to see all of your workspace admins at the top of the list, Click on Access Level twice, and make sure that the arrow next to it points downwards. This means that access levels are shown in descending order. To achieve the contrary, click on Access Level again, and this will move all admins to the bottom of the list. Manually adding someone to a workspace is easy, but it's certainly not scalable in a large organization like yours. If your company has an email domain, you can simply allow anyone with that email domain to join your workspace. To do this, go to Workspace Settings. Here, you can manually type in your email domain and automatically allow anyone with said domain to join the workspace. Provided that you, or any other already existing workspace member, join Notion using your company email, said email domain will show up as you're typing it. Click on it, then on Update. Once that's done, Anyone whose email has the following domain can automatically join this workspace. In other words, assuming every employee in your company is assigned a work email with your company email domain, they will be able to join this workspace without having to ask anyone for a special invitation. Once this is set up, your only responsibility would be to forward this URL, which contains your domain name, to everyone via the medium of your choice. Your people team could also include this in onboarding materials, and you wouldn't have to touch it again. As this sentence explains, anyone with an email address tied to the email you just allowed can join the workspace by clicking on this link. Now, what if you wanted to create smaller groups of people inside your workspace? Once your Notion workspace becomes available to all several hundreds or thousands of people in your team, you will find instances where you would rather keep some pages private to a smaller group of people. For example, the People team could be working on updating this Benefits page and prefer to keep their progress to themselves until the content is final. That's where groups come in. If you're on an enterprise plan, you will have the option to set up Skim in your workspace to manage provisioning users and permission groups. To utilize your groups, head to the Share menu of a page. Instead of choosing specific people to share the page with, you can choose one of our groups and remove access for the rest of the team. 
As simple as that. Just note that while we highly recommend using Skim for large teams, you will also have the option of manually creating groups by clicking into the Group tab in the Members section. You will likely need to collaborate with people external to your company, people who you might want to share a few Notion pages with, but not your entire workspace. In Notion jargon, we call these people guests. To add a guest to a Notion page, click on that Pages Share menu, then on Invite. Then you can type in the external person's email and select it like so. Click this dropdown to decide upon your guest's access levels. From full access, where they can edit the page and share it with others, to can view, where all they can do is view the page. Then hit Invite. Your new collaborator will appear here with a guest badge next to them. If you go back to your Guests tab, you'll find your new addition in the list. Click here to see the page or pages a guest has access to. Guests who have editing rights or full access to a page will be able to create new subpages within that page. However, they won't be allowed to change anything outside that page, such as adding top-level pages in the sidebar. Now, let's go back to the Settings section to talk about public page sharing. Aside from modifying the name and icon of your workspace, admins can also decide upon a domain name. If you decide to share some of your Notion pages publicly to the web, your page's URLs will always start with the domain name of your choice, followed by Notion.site. Notion gives every workspace a randomly generated domain name. If you wish to, you can easily change it like so. Just type the name you want in the text box. If this domain is already in use by another team, this red message will appear to the right of the text box, and you'll have to come up with another name. If the name is available, this green message will appear. From now on, any Notion page you share to the web will start with this string. So how do you share a page to the web? Click on the Share menu at the top right and toggle the Share to Web option on. This will automatically generate a URL, making the page public and accessible to anyone. You can copy it here. Now that we've chosen our company's web domain, we can determine where we want this main URL to link to. For example, if you pick this already public careers page, people will be able to access it via the main URL, which is shorter than the long link we just copied. Note that both links will work and take people to the same page. Finally, just note that you can prevent workspace members from sharing any page to the web and make sure your information remains private to your team. To do this, go to Security and Identity and turn this toggle on. By default, Workspace members can install any third-party integration. Should you want to limit this right to admins only, simply go to Integrations, then select from Approved List from the dropdown. With this option on, admins will have to add approved integrations here before they are installed. For example, your team might want to store valuable information shared on a Slack channel inside a Notion database for later consultation. Or one could decide to send Typeform results to a Notion database to manage leads more easily. To approve all integrations built by Notion, turn on this toggle. And to add an approved integration, click here and find it by typing its name or integration ID. Finally, let's explore this security and identity section a little more. This option prevents non-admins from changing anything in your workspace sidebar. In other words, if you turn the toggle on, workspace members will not be able to create, move, reorder, or delete top-level pages. This helps everyone to stick to the same workspace structure, especially as the team scales. On the other hand, admins will still be able to move and create pages in the sidebar. Disabling guests will automatically remove all guests in the workspace and prevent anyone from inviting guests hereafter. This means members will need to ask you or another admin in order to add guests to their pages. This is great for security purposes, but depending on your team's needs could be quite cumbersome. We suggest working on an official guest policy that all leaders are aligned on. You can also remove the option of moving or duplicating pages to other Notion workspaces. 
This helps keep all of your company's information in one place so that you as an admin know what's going on. Finally, to keep your company's information secure, toggle here to prevent anyone from exporting pages as Markdown, CSV, or PDF. If you would like to enable single sign-on, the first step will be to configure SAML for your domain and workspace. For instructions on how to configure SAML, check out this article on our Help Center. That's all for this video. By now, you should understand your main responsibilities as an admin, from picking a domain name, to monitoring guests, and making sure your sidebar stays simple and clean. Remember, these duties can be shared. You can turn any member into an admin from the Members section. And keep in mind that this tutorial only covers a subset of the things you can achieve as an admin. For further knowledge and tips, stay tuned! Thank you.